is another beautiful day on your image with Aki Okudero, your anchor. Last week, we were on the topic understanding the town and gun effects of agricultural universities, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. But of course, we discussed and congratulated the uh, uh, Federal University of Agriculture for now on their latest world ranking as the best university of agriculture in Africa. And also, we also had a breaking news that FUNAB ranked 11th best value university in Nigeria for international students. Uh, along the line too, uh, FUNAB was also placed among the top 25% best university in the world ranking. You can Google that on the www.studyabroadage.com. This week, I have the privilege of also having good scholars, avid experts, and professors in their own rights. Today, I have Professor Olale called Jacob Olaye who is also here to continue with the topic. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I also have uh, Professor Kola Wale Adebayo. He's also another good scholar and a deputy vice chancellor Federal University and Development, Federal University of Agriculture, a doctor. Thanks for being with us last week. Thank you, sir. And uh, we thank you for the input and the natural resources that, uh, and enlightenment that you give to us. It's revealing. We are continuing the topic, and I remember last week yes. we were talking about why students are interested in government employment than setting up their own businesses. And uh, you came up with the fact that uh, a lot of them are not even shifting to government employment, that they are on their own. So what is the effort or support the Federal University of Agriculture is giving to the students for sustainable. Thank you very much, sir. I want to say categorically that FUNAB has what is called innovation ops. And this innovation ops has different branches. Here on this we have entrepreneurship skill. These enterprises in different aspects of agriculture that these students had passed or is going through or had passed through during the course of their study. And not only that, I said, do you know what is called the covers, community farming skills? Said some of these about to be graduated students said they want to stay in a particular community. That is, achieving community together. That is the slogan. That is why their parents establish for them in different communities where those students are. And not only that, too. For now, also collaborate with our graduates on what is called public profit partnership. Student, graduated students that are more knowledgeable in a particular defined skills collaborate with the universities to impart their knowledge to young ones. And they also serve as a training center for most of all these students. They employ them as graduate trainee or management trainee, agric management trainee at different farm locations. And they are there all over. Meet in aquaculture, apiary, crops. Niche, niche enterprises, other niche, scenery, Vegetable. crop farming, Rabbit. agroforestry, Rabbit. rabbitry, poultry. These are jamming area. And there's also what is called Oti Nigeria, in which our graduates are deeply involved in horticultural cross-productions. 
this are this domicile within the campus. You know, Funab has 10,000 hectares of farmland. There are particular areas of land that the university are located to graduates that want to go into self-employed self enterprises. And not only that, there was another one called graduate scheme. Graduate work scheme. Graduate work scheme. The, the certificate is a security for them. Let me ask this question again. Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, if you have a lot of uh, students collaborating with FUNAB and uh, also partnering with uh, farmers and yes. the like, yes. I still, the question the people are asking is that why is there not abundance of food? <laughs> yes, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Now, not that there is no food production. We have a lot of food that are produced. Of course. Eat rural areas. Farming is done majorly in rural areas, not in urban areas. So what are the and problems? The problem, sir, the major one is what is called post-harvest is one of the problems. Post-harvest losses. Post losses. And this post-harvest losses is almost, is between 30 to 50 percent post-harvest losses in agricultural produce. Be it tomato, pepper, even fish. I want to tell you, sir, that some fish farmers, they find it difficult at peak of harvest to sell their fish because they are located interior. The road to that location is bad. And the buyers will not want to go to that location. They want nearby. And movement from that particular location to urban center is a challenge. Well, let me ask uh, Professor Adebayo. Uh, because you are in charge of development in the university, uh, you have seen a gap. What is the university dream to bridge that gap? Excellent. In relations with government, in relation with individuals, in relations with companies that can help in reducing those challenges and bringing to the fore abundance of food. Thank you very much. You see, as a university, it's our problem to, uh, it's our mandate to identify this problem and provide solutions. Um, there are policy issues that are, you know, usually brought to the attention of government from time to time. Uh, our university uh, worked with the Ogun State government uh, throughout 2021-2022, uh, developing this uh, renewed agricultural policy. Uh, there have been a number of input from our colleagues in the Federal University of Agriculture at into the development of an agri policy for Nigeria, an agri extension policy for Nigeria, and the sectoral policy, fisheries, livestock development, and so on. But these are documents that require implementation and dedicated implementation. Agriculture is also a time-bound activity. That is. Once you have the document, you need to spend time, sometimes up to a year, sometimes up to two to three years, to implement those policy uh, recommendations. So we do that from time to time. The other thing we've done is engagement with industries. I know that FUNAB, for instance, has an MOU with uh, Abel Sima. I work with the chambers of um, uh, so commerce, mines, industry. uh, industries, and agriculture uh, on developing a number of um, agricultural uh, enterprises, uh, privately owned, with technological input from the university to ensure that they get the best possible in that field. Then there are a number of private sector actors that has approached the university to support them in the development of innovative approaches to their uh, agricultural uh, commoditization. For instance, um, our irrigation facility is being tapped on by a number of uh, private sector groups. Uh, Green Tech is one of them to develop uh, horticultural outputs using modern innovations, not the um, regular uh, approaches to. So we, we, we try to engage in all of this, including and up to storage and processing activities. 
For instance, we have a huge uh, FUNAB integrated ventures group, you know, into uh, cashew, into oil palm, into um, processing of meat, processing of fish. But most of this is to prepare students for future life in commercial agriculture. Therefore, as a university, that's where we can stop. Once the students see this opportunity, then they go into those opportunities that Professor Lai has mentioned to establish themselves in the field. Unfortunately, food prices are affected not just by the volume of production, but also by other factors uh, running the, uh, the country, including cost of energy, petrol, diesel, and you know, as uh, my colleague said, many of these enterprises are located in rural areas where electricity is in short supply, roads are not as good as in the urban area. All of these challenge uh, the cost that people have to pay eventually. If all of these cost elements are moderated, then food will be reasonably priced. OK, yeah. let, let me also uh, catch you up on uh, the mandate of the university, uh, particularly the extension services. Uh, how far, how has how far has for now met the mandate? <laughs> well, that's, that's, we have a mandate that covers the whole of Southwest Nigeria. Okay. And our task as a center of knowledge is to engage with stakeholders. The people with the direct activity with farmers are the agricultural extension programs in each state. Mm -hmm. So there's an Ogun State Agricultural Extension Program, there's an Oyo State Agricultural Extension Program, there's a Shoe State. All of this come together at Ibadan, IRT, with us annually to review agricultural practices in the entire region and to recommend what will be the production recommendations for that particular year. FUNAB has been taking a lead in this for decades now. And that's where our primary resource is felt. The other one is in the um, media resource production. So, for instance, AMREC has a radio program, Agbedotu, yes. which promotes agricultural extension, agricultural knowledge. And it's still running? Uh, it's still running. Yes. It's still running. I guess from this engagement with OGTV, perhaps a collaboration with OGTV in some of these activities that AMREC is talking about is also necessary so that the public will be aware of some of these activities. Then you know that when graduates of agriculture makes money, they are not the type to throw their money all about. So you won't see them throwing money everywhere. Many of these guys are comfortably living within this country. Well, uh, uh, that was very willing <laughs> because uh, unless you open up to the public, will they will never know what is happening. Oh, well, let me also say that uh, the perception and expectation of the citizens are such that they want to see things, food, expertise, exposure of even the man on the road to surplus, opulence. And uh, they'll be quick to react to see that uh, they have the rest of agriculture in Abekuta. <laughs> and yet, uh, just like uh, some people say that Yamalasho, uh, uh, you see, uh, the, the child of uh, Cloth cell cloth cell it's very well. relaxed. Exactly. So, how do you hope mm. to change mm. not just the perception, mm. but to create enlightenment mm -hmm. to the grassroots mm. and gender participation and, if possible, partnership? Thank you very much, sir. Let me start this way. FUNAB is not only developing the student alone. FUNAB is developing all stakeholders in agriculture through our extension services. Any members of the communities are free to visit 
university extension service uses AMREC for a knowledge as far as agriculture is that concerned. That would assist them. This will shape the way they do their farming activities. That is one aspect of it. Another very important thing is this. FUNAP also link them to source of credit. We also link members of the community to source of credit. But sincerity and integrity is on the part of the beneficiaries are key challenges that we have been facing. Can that be controlled? <coughs> Since we have groups. Yes. We, in most cases, we have what is called the group farming approach, cluster farming approach, and we want individuals, people of integrity, to stand as guarantor. And when they default, we get our pen to the guarantors. We have stand for this. Because we knew that the major problem for farming is finance. So in that aspect of that. And not only that, we also assist in marketing. We link our farmers to source, different source of market of the at any level that you want. That the, the buyer will not exploit the buyers, the sellers at this time around. Because that is another very important thing. It's one thing for farmers to produce. It's another thing for them to get buyers. In most cases, we even go to the rural area to help them to bring all those goods to come and sell within the university community. We do that even during the last festive period. Farmers that produce broiler, we brought it to campus. Farmers that produce fish, we brought it to campus, we could buy. And the, in the presence of the farmer. And instantly, Pablo, the Pablo, that is why uh, most people don't understand what you are doing. Yeah. Pablo, do you need a city center mm. or some localities? That's, 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 a, that's an idea. So that, so that beyond the, yeah. the university. Well, uh, let me ask you, since uh, all these things are revelations, what's your advice to government? I think yeah. generally in helping agricultural to help the agricultural sector, we need to improve our infrastructure. Um, essentially, rural roads are important, rural electricity is important, and then even internet access, so that we make our rural areas conducive to living for young people. Because we need to get young people on the farm, and young people won't stay on the farm if the facilities available in the cities are not available in the rural areas. So, for me, I think that this should be a major area in the uh, drive of the current government to uh, address the issue of food security. Then over and above all, safety, security. Farmers must be able to go to farm and come back without molestation or the possibility of being kidnapped. That's important. And nobody wants to train their child uh, up to graduate level in the universities only to be uh, you know, kidnapped or uh, you know, face some security challenges. So government need to address this to support uh, the investment of government in universities like ours uh, to develop the agricultural sector. Well, that is to government, to corporate institutions in business, in agricultural production and the like. What's your advice? Thank you very much. My candid advice for the is public private partnership with universities. Innovations are there in the universities. Industries should come and collaborate, should come and get these technologies from the universities. I believe if uh, Monte could not come to Mohammed, Mohammed would go to Monte. So our doors are opened. Okay. University doors are opened at any point in time. Innovations are there in universities. They are there lining down for investors to come and grab these technologies opportunities for use. To the people, 
parallelly, most people that are agitating and they are lacking knowledge in the processes, in the development which FUNAP is taking and pursuing. So what do you say to them? I say, I agree with my colleague. The doors of the university are open. We have a public relations unit that could be reached 24-7. Uh, Our vice chancellor, Professor Ken, uh, Babatunde Kende, is a very friendly and open uh, and a person. People could reach out to him directly. They could reach out to me as a deputy vice chancellor of development or even uh, my colleague uh, in charge of Africa Extension, um, Professor Olale Kon Olaoye. All of us are willing and able to work with the public to get them to understand what is happening and to get them to see areas where they need to look to see the impact of the university. Yeah, I'll still take you up. You are a Commonwealth scholar. That is true. And probably also in collaboration with uh, some agencies internationally. That is, that is correct. Uh, contemporarily, how do you situate FUNAB Nigeria with other institutions <laughs> and missions? I, I, I would say that even though there is a common saying that the prophet is not always not in, not in his hometown. hometown. You see, Fula, in the last 30 years, have been at the forefront of the agricultural uh, revolution on this continent. The Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, is credited today as being one of the lead organizations that took cassava bread to Malawi. You remember when um, President Jonathan went to Malawi and they said, oh, we have cassava bread and he likes it. And I remember the country manager uh, then, Vito Sandifolo, telling him that he was brought to us by Nigerians. This is the Federal University of Agriculture of Okuta. Uh, we have also been at the forefront of even the development of uh, equipment and export, uh, the development of the flash dryer for drying agricultural commodities was done in Nigeria here in collaboration with our partners in IITA and other places. FUNAB was at the forefront of this uh, dimension. Then even in the breeding sector, breeding of uh, poultry, uh, there is uh, the FUNAB Alpha. Which is, which is, you know, has hit the market uh, very big time. There is a color word, the breed, the cross between uh, Kalari goats and the West African dwarf goat. So instead of a normal short uh, West African dwarf goat, we now have taller ones, hybrid, that are, uh, that are taller and that are more meaty. All of these are the opportunities that the university had had and to position itself beyond. Uh, is it? In the first 10 universities in the, of agriculture in the world, FUNAB is the only one there. In the first 10 universities of agriculture in, in the world, FUNAB is the only one there from Africa. And that's something. The world recognizes this, and there are FUNAB products in every agricultural institution you go to all across the world. But we need to also mention that FUNAB is not just agriculture. It's agriculture and related fields. So there's environmental sciences, there's uh, ICT, there's uh, physical sciences, chemical sciences, even entrepreneurship as a course. And uh, himself being in charge of fishery. He's in charge of fishery and, and uh, uh, extension. Wow, well, well, we are so lucky. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just last shot. Last shot. Funa has a lot of experts as far as fish farming is concerned. is concerned. Fish farming, fish farming, let me put it that way, fish farming. Any investor that want to From go into that area and to process should, come, should come to FUNAB. And there are experts that will guide and, them. And they would have they would, response. They will break through. Well, that's to you, members of the public, entrepreneurs, business people. FUNAB's door is very open. Agenda a new idea of partnership and discovering new methods, new technology of doing things. Nigeria must be in abundance, not only in food production, but also in developing talents, experts to other nations in the world. It is on this note that uh, we are going to conclude the discussion. Our topic has been understanding the town and gown effects of agricultural universities in Nigeria. And I had the pleasure 
and the honor to have a professor, Kalawali Adebayo, Deputy Vice Chancellor.